Welcome to another one of my videos reviewing locomotives in my collection. In this video I will be uh, looking at all of the Bully Pacifics, Wren and Hornby, Merchant Navy, West Country and Battle of Britain, original and rebuilt. I'm not going to be dwelling on the relative merits, demerits, advantages, disadvantages of the originals or as built condition vis-a-vis -vis the rebuilds. I think enough ink has already been spilt on that subject over the past few decades. Um, uh, without me uh, adding to it, um, for those who wish to explore this further, I can recommend some um, further reading on that subject, uh, which I've linked in the description below the video. Um, Or what I, what I will say, I suppose, is, is that the Bully Pacifics, in their rebuilt form, represented the most modern development of the steam locomotive in the British Isles, combining the best of bullied with the then current state of steam locomotive construction, technology and knowledge in 1955. Uh, if anyone doubts that, all I, all I would say to them is, go and have a look at the section display of number 35029 Elliman lines in the National Railway Museum in York. Anyway, let's have a look at the models. So first up is a Wren model of Barnstaple. And this came out, or rather the Hornby Dublo version uh, of this came out in 1961. It was there last one of the last models um, they produced before they you know went into receivership shortly after I think it was 1964 um, when uh, they were taken over by Lyons Brothers um, the model when it first appeared I think had a mixed reception um, it wasn't met with the same quite the same enthusiasm as had uh, been the case with the Castle and the 8F, but nevertheless, um, I, I still think it's a fine looking model and it captures well the, um, the rebuilt um, um, look and presence of the uh, rebuilt uh, Bully Pacific. So, moving a bit further along, what we have here is 34001 Exeter. Now this is a model I originally got from Hattons around, around about 1972-73 and to be quite honest I wasn't particularly happy with it. Um, it came in a very sort of uh, washed out green colour, a bit more like olive green and I think it was about 10-12 years ago I decided to do something about it I'm very much like the um, a couple of the castles that I showed in my previous video. I had this uh, professionally resprayed and relined and renamed, and I think it looks so much better as as a result of that. Um, the number the numbers are transfers, and the actual nameplate is an etched metal one and you can see how well it stands out on this model. So that's, uh, I think it's got some detail on the front, uh, a southern, southern region train headboard on that one, but I think it really does look uh, quite, quite magnificent that one. This one here is Lyme Regis and here we have a prime example of one of Wren's uh, fanciful livery variations. Um, whilst not incorrect, um, it being a southern region locomotive, um, this livery actually predates um, the actual building or the rebuilding of the West Country class Pacifics. Um, I expect that this livery probably um, came to an end around about 1950 
and 51, maybe even 1952. Now, these locomotives were rebuilt from 1956 to 1961, uh, with the West Countries and the Battle of Britons um, being very much towards the end of the 50s, um, and with them with the um, <clears throat> fate already sealed in my, um, on the future of steam, the last one was actually rebuilt in 1961. But again, this this looks good, and it, it's a bit of a collector's item because of its um, it's still quite easy to find, but but because of the the colour and the unique um, uh, finish of that uh, malachite green with the yellow lining uh, gives it a certain sort of uh, standout distinction. Um, like all Wren locomotives they run extremely well. They're fast, they're powerful, they're strong and um, the actual sort of motion of the Walshitz valve gear on these is very well replicated. Um, it, it is very reminiscent of the um, real locomotives. Uh, moving along, um, here we have an example of the original um, look of the West Country class. This one's City of Wells. This, also, this is also a Wren. These have become something of a, a very much a collector's item. Um, I would describe them as the model railway equivalent of precious metal ingots. Uh, it's a very fine looking locomotive. It's quite interesting the detail that they've managed to get on the top. If you look, look at the, um, the smoke deflectors and the, the actual sort of um, connections to the uh, smooth casing, as Bullied called it. They weren't streamlined as such in the conventional sense. Um, as I say, Bullied referred to it as um, air smooth casing. I think the original idea was to uh, so that they could be run through the carriage cleaning plants um, to facilitate the, the cleaning. And certainly the shape of that would, uh, would, seem, would, would suggest that. Of course, like a lot of these, a lot of, like a lot of things connected with the original, the Pacifics in their original form, things didn't actually work out that way. Um, I th the, the brushing and the spraying of water um, would get underneath the um, casing and potentially it was messing up the uh, the lubrication of the valve gear and um, <clears throat> the slide bars so it was something which didn't quite work out. Next along we've got a merchant navy in its original um, shape and its original form um, although Wren didn't actually go to the lengths of uh, distinguishing the um, the difference in sizes here, um, but this one's Lamport and Holt line in the rather attractive uh, early BR blue scheme. I think which quite suits these um, original the, the Bully Pacifics in their original form. Stands out well. Again, it's very well represented. The detail on it, the riveting on it. Um, the riveting is um, as good as the uh, first rendition that uh, Triang did with Winston Churchill and that was particularly good as well. I um, don't know if you can see but there is um, a firebox backplate in the cab so there's no protruding motor. There's, a, there's detail inside there. The, the tender is just the same as the one that's on Barnstaple. Um, so they haven't actually done anything with uh, to recreate the original air smooth casing on the tender, but it still works. So next along we've got Clan Line. 
again, this is a further example of uh, Wren uh, expanding the range without having to do uh, very much in the way of um, modifying the tooling at all. All we're looking at is new nameplates and new new numbers on the, using the existing tooling. So it gives, I suppose, greater uh, greater variety um, and you know potential selling uh, selling point for um, uh, you know the, the, this line of locomotives getting the most out of them out of the actual. Um, original tooling. As you can see the uh, the size of the firebox between the boiler and the cab is very much of the lighter Pacific. Um, on the Merchant Navies there is a much um, there's a much bigger um, uh, overall presence, bigger size uh, to, to that uh, part of the locomotive. So the cylinders were almost the same size, they were fractionally bigger on the uh, Merchant Navies. Difficult to see on, on, on a scale model, you probably just about notice if you're looking hard enough. But essentially the wheels are the same size um, and the, oval, the, the look is, is virtually identical. Um, so I reckon Wren can get away with it for um, putting a Merchant Navy name and number on essentially the, uh, <clears throat> the smaller version of the Pacifics. Now moving on, we, we've got a Hornby Margate uh, version of the original Bullied Pacific. This one's Exeter, um, the first of the lightweights and it's in the attractive malachite green. Very bold. Now th this in, it, in essence is the exactly the same as the uh, Triang Rovex um, model that came out in mid-1960s and was given the name Winston Churchill. It fell out of favour um, I think throughout the 1970s and 1980s and it made its reappearance, I think, uh, in the early 90s. Um, I can't be exactly sure about that. If, if it was different, someone can let me know. Now, when they first introduced this back again into the catalogue in the 1990s, uh, they replicated uh, the rather crude um, rendition of the uh, slide bars um, which was just a, basically a, a, a moulded plastic add-on to the body shell. Um, and um, fair dues to them, I think, because not long after they decided they, they, to dispense with that and tooled up um, a proper slide bar arrangement, which was much, much better and which actually gave the representation of the piston moving a, a back and forth uh, on the slide bar. And we can see it here. There we go. That's it. This is much better. Now, as it stood, um, this was just uh, like a moulded grey and it did look somewhat plasticky. Now what I've done with this is to um, paint it. And I first started painting in between the slide bars a matte black. Then I painted the piston and the slide bars oily steel. And um, above the slide bars, the southern region had um, a feature where they would paint the uh, lubrication block above the slide bars red. You will see this on plenty of colour photos, particularly when they were out of works or they'd been uh, nicely polished up and cleaned, maybe for a special duty. Um, and it wasn't just on the uh, Merchant Navies, they'd, I've seen it on the schools class as well. Um, it's just a particular um, niche thing that the southern region did. So I've represented it there, as you can see, and this in my view, greatly improves the look of this locomotive. 
it looks much better, much more realistic. And you actually see that um, piston um, going back and forth much more clearly um, against the black background um, of the slide bar and um, just making improving the overall um, look of the lo locomotive when it's in motion. Also nicely represented on this model is the circular uh, Southern Railway um, emblem around the smoke box door handle. And I've got the characteristic uh, route indicator discs. Similar again, this is another 1990s Hornby Margate locomotive. This one is Spitfire. Now, I bought the body for this um, without any sort of reference to what I was going to do with it because I thought um, I might marry it up to one of the Margate chassis. And sure enough, one, when one presented itself, um, I, I bought it and to my horror, I, it, it didn't match up. The body did not fit onto that chassis uh, because the body had been modified um, to take the newer style, or rather the chassis had been modified to take the newer style slide bars. And the body for Spitfire was, you know, a replica of the old Triang one from the 1960s. It had the uh, rather dreadful um, plastic moulded um, slide bars moulded onto the uh, body top. So I cut those off thinking that would be able to um, be placed onto the uh, chassis, but um, that was not to be. I had to cut a piece out at the front here to make it fit. And then the screws didn't, uh, didn't line up with the hole because that had changed as well. Oh well, uh, such is life. It's stuck down now, but um, I'm not hoping. I'm <clears throat> I have no intentions of really removing the body again. Just one other little thing I did on this locomotive and on Exeter is if you look at the cab and the cab windows, uh, characteristically these were uh, polished wood. So I've sort of tried to replicate that that on there, just uh, touched it up with a bit of uh, wood um, looking paint and um, yeah it makes a difference because uh, if you look at the real things you will notice that the, the frames are, are wood on the Bully Pacific's polished wood and very very nice they look too. Um, so it's a bit another additional standout on this. The printing on this uh, first rendition, 1990s rendition of the um, original Pacific wasn't very good. If you look at Exeter, uh, the printing there is, is um, quite sharp, nicely stamped on, um, full marks there. But on Spitfire, it was left something to be desired. So I've got an etched nameplate um, overlaid onto the nameplate area and also the coat of arms underneath it is also um, a 3D standout etched um, emblem stuck over the printed one. So that gives that a bit of improved, an improved look. The next one is 501 Squadron and this one is decked out in the golden arrow regalia, as you can see. And this one looks smart too. On this one, I've attempted to paint the uh, injector pipe work underneath the cab. Um, and again, you can see that the slide bars have been painted and um, That looks much better. On all of the Hornby ones here, I've added additional detail on the buffer beams, the pipes, vacuum pipes, 
coupling, screw coupling. And in some cases I've put in metal buffers uh, to get uh, some of them. One of them, I think it was on Spitfire, buffers were okay, they were metal. But on 501 Squadron, there were awful plastic ones. And I've put metal ones on and metal ones on Exeter. Now, I'm going to leave it here on this video because I've probably run out of space for this section. And I will do the, um, the later versions of these engines, uh, the later Hornby versions, that is, um, on the next video. Okay.